Now, if you're considering getting an Apple Watch to track your sports, then the Apple Watch Series 11 might be a good option. And I spent the whole day testing it to help you decide if the Apple Watch Series 11 is the one you should go with, or maybe it is the Apple Watch Ultra 3, but this video focuses on the Apple Watch Series 11. We're gonna test its heart rate tracking performance during four different exercises, and we're also gonna be looking at the GPS tracking performance. Now, for those of you who don't know me, my name is Rob, and I'm a postdoctoral scientist specializing in biological data analysis. The Series 11 looks more or less like the Series 10. They're always a little bit improved, but what I wanna focus on is can you use it to track your exercise and specifically, can you track your heart rate? So when you're running, cycling, indoor cycling or weightlifting, will the Apple Watch Series 11 reliably track your heart rate and show you the correct heart rate? And also, if you're using it to track your pace during running or your speed during cycling, can you trust that speed that it's showing and the number of kilometers afterwards? This will be an initial test for those of you that are deciding whether or not to get this device. I would also recommend checking out my videos on the Apple Watch Ultra three when that comes out and the one on the airpods pro 3 which actually has great heart rate tracking for gym goers but potentially not so much for runners but i'll get back to that in that video let's start by taking a look at the heart rate tracking performance of the apple watch series 11 and again we're starting with one of the easiest exercises to track your heart rate indoor cycling with the reference along the horizontal axis, which is the Polar H10 ECG chest strap, which can generally record my heart rate very accurately, and the Apple Watch Series 11 along the vertical axis. I'm wearing the 46 millimeter version, by the way. Now, if the Apple Watch agrees perfectly with the reference device, all points should be on or close to the blue line, and all points are close to the blue line, so that's good. Maybe there were a few measurements that had a bit of deviation, but overall, this is looking very good unless there are dropouts. So let's take a look at the spinning session itself. And in that spinning session itself with the Apple Watch Series 11 in red and the reference in blue green, we again, similar to the Apple Watch Ultra 3, see almost perfect overlap. There's a little bit of deviation here near the end. And actually at the same moment as the Apple Watch Ultra 3, there's like a tiny moment of dropout. So maybe I stopped for a second and it was auto pause. I'm not sure why it's the same moment, but overall it looks almost perfect. You're not gonna get much better performance than this. And if we then compare this performance to the competition, we can see that the Apple Watch Series 11 is among some of the best devices out there. So we calculate a correlation, which was 1.00, as we saw in the overview. I don't think I'm pointing that out, but a correlation value cannot be higher than one. And a correlation of 1.00, which is along the horizontal axis, is almost perfect. So it's rounded to two decimals. And if we zoom in, we can see that the Apple Watch Series 11 did basically the same as the Apple Watch Series 10, at least based on my testing, and also the same as my retesting I did recently of the Apple Watch Ultra 2. The Apple Watch Ultra 3 is also super close. So the same sensor and the weight here doesn't really play a role, so I expect similar performance for all these Apple Watches. So as we saw for weightlifting with the Apple Watch Ultra 3, potentially Apple is still improving the firmware over time to make the heart rate tracking better with the same sensor even. But let's make things more difficult and let's take a look at the results for running. And here we have that overview for running, which looks pretty good. Almost all points are super close to the blue line. Maybe two points are deviating a bit. The correlation is rounded again to 1.00, so very good. So basically nothing to complain about. It might have even done a tiny bit better than the Ultra 3, maybe based on its weight, but let's take a look at the session itself to confirm. And indeed the red line of the Apple Watch Series 11 overlaps almost perfectly with the reference device. There was one moment right here where it stopped detecting my heart rate for a while, but I was waiting in front of the traffic light, so maybe it auto paused again. Otherwise, basically perfect. And if we compare it to the Apple Watch Ultra 3, it did do a little bit better. So it's the best device out of any devices that I've tested, at least purely based on that correlation. Being super close to the Amazfit Helio strap or on the biceps, we can actually see that a little bit better if we zoom in right here. So the Apple Watch Series 11 has a really good correlation, even a little bit better than the Apple Watch Ultra 3, but I think this is within the margin of error. And it did about the same as the Apple Watch Series 9, 
and also my retesting of the Apple Watch Ultra 2. Again, Apple Watches are just doing amazing at heart rate tracking. Apple somehow figured out a really good combination of a good heart rate sensor with good firmware to actually process that data. But the two hardest exercises are still to come, cycling and weightlifting. And let's start with the results for cycling. But before getting to the cycling results, if you want to support the channel, there's multiple ways of doing that. It would be amazing if you can subscribe, of course, and like. If you want to more directly support, I also have YouTube memberships, which is basically Patreon on YouTube. Or you can use one of my affiliate links. For instance, if you're into running, I really like the Runner app for that, which you can find linked up here. Or if you end up buying an Apple Watch using my Amazon affiliate link, or for any purchase on Amazon for that matter, thanks for considering. And let's take a look at the results for cycling, which I was lucky enough to do on this very hot day here in Vienna with my beautiful new bike. And the results right here still look very good. Sometimes the Series 11 detected a slightly too low heart rate, but only by about 10 BPM and only sometimes. The correlation is still very good at 0.99, not rounded anymore to 1.00, but still very good. But let's see when it actually detected the too low heart rate. And in this overview plot, we can see that probably during this section right here, it detected a slightly too low heart rate for just a little bit, but otherwise we have almost perfect overlap of the heart rate as detected by the Apple Watch Series 11 and the reference device. And if we compare this to the competition, the Apple Watch Series 11 is really one of the best devices out there. So really doing quite well. So if we zoom in right here, we can see it's close to the Apple Watch Series 9, the Apple Watch Series 10, the Apple Watch Ultra 1, the Apple Watch Ultra 2. The Apple Watch Ultra 3 did a tiny bit better in the same bike ride but the difference is negligible and we cannot conclude that it's a significant difference. Overall though, all the Apple Watches are doing very well, but their one weakness is weightlifting. So let's take a look at that. Luckily for weightlifting, the results are still pretty good for the Apple Watch Series 11. The correlation is a bit lower now at 0.99 and we do see a few more points away from the blue line. However, nothing systematic that shows an issue, even in the higher heart rate range, the results are still pretty good and this is where many devices struggle. However, again, there might be some dropouts. And indeed, we can see a few dropout moments actually at similar moments as we saw for the Ultra 3. So these first two peaks show some dropouts so that are some straight lines right here and right here. And also it struggled a little bit right here. Overall though, compared to the competition, still quite good. But we do have at least one, two, three moments of dropout and one moment where it struggled. So I'd still recommend using an ECG chest strap over the Apple Watch Ultra if you like going to the gym and lifting a lot of weights. The only alternative really are air-based heart rate measurements. So the Powerbeats Pro 2 or the new Apple AirPods Pro 3, which I'll make a separate review for, which were amazing for weightlifting. It had just one issue for me for running that might have to do with the fit that I'm still optimizing, but I think that bumping has really affected it a little bit, but you can see that in that separate review. Overall though, compared to the competition, this is still quite good, as you can see in this overview right here. So we have the Apple Watch Series 11 marked in red right here, and it's really among some of the best performers. So if we zoom in, we have the Apple Watch Series 11, very close to the Ultra 3, but also the Apple Watch Ultra 1, 2, Ultra 2, my retesting of the Ultra 2. And for all of these might have some moments of dropout, whereas the Powerbeats Pro 2 didn't have this dropout issue. And the same to a large degree was also true for the AirPods Pro 3. So stay tuned for that review. It should be up within the next 12 hours or so. However, let's next take a look at the GPS tracking performance of the Apple Watch Series 11. And this actually seems to be a tiny bit worse than the performance of the Ultra 3, probably because the Ultra 3 has dual band GPS and the Series 11 doesn't. But you can judge yourself. I'll show you the results and you can say if it's good enough for your purposes. And right here we have the GPS tracking results for the run that I did where I basically ran in a circle many times, trying to run in the exact same location. And as you can see, it looks pretty good, I would say. There is some deviation. So for instance, right here in the beginning, this signal is a bit deviating from the rest, which might actually be true if the Apple Watch smooths the signal for a bit. So this corner right here is probably not as extreme as I ran it, at least that's my feeling. Though, of course, that's hard to say. And if I'm coming in with some speed, there might've been some deviation. Though I tried to stick to the middle of this lane. 
Then later on, the results are really good. Also, this looks really good. And interestingly, even though the consistency between the signals is not quite as good as we saw for the Ultra 3, the Series 11 here does show more the pattern that I would expect, where first I go out a little bit and then back in. So I run closer to the edge here. But in the beginning, because I have some speed, I go around a circle however that's not really what happens here it wouldn't be this extreme I take quite a tight turn so I do think there is some smoothing going on and there's also a little bit more deviation than we saw for the ultra 3 also right here this is deviating a bit more overall not bad performance by any means but I do think there's post-processing going on and potentially even a little bit more post-processing than we saw for the Ultra 3. Though honestly, I don't think a lot is known about how Apple actually post-processes the GPS signal. So they might do some smoothing around the corners or smoothing in general to remove any slightly jagged edges, which is probably good because in most cases you are running quite a smooth-ish signal, though it might result in some artifacts. Other manufacturers like Garmin, for instance, have more the philosophy of giving you the raw signal, which might have slight jagged edges, though Garmin is really good at GPS tracking. I do think though that the performance of the Apple Watch Series 11 is pretty good. I did like the performance of the Ultra 3 a little bit better, though I do think that for both also there's some kind of processing going on. So I'll be really interested in my future testing to see what that looks like also for cycling because with the increased speed they might do even more post-processing. But if you want to find out don't forget to subscribe and I'd also recommend checking out the Ultra 3 video to look at that track. So the Apple Watch Series 11 like many of the Apple Watches that came before is one of the most reliable heart rate trackers out there especially for things like cycling or indoor cycling and running. Weightlifting is still the weakest point, but it seems to be getting better and better. And with the Apple Watch Series 11, I actually had relatively minor issues, so I was quite happily surprised. I still want to do different kinds of exercises, so today I focused on chest and triceps, and there I didn't see so many issues. But maybe with different biceps exercises or pull-ups, I would have more issues with the heart rate sensor. But that's for a future video in a week or two. This initial test though shows that Apple is really one of the leaders when it comes to heart rate tracking on the wrist and in the ear. But as I said, that is discussed in my AirPods Pro 3 video. But is the Apple Watch 11 the one I would get? Well, if money was no object, I would actually get the Apple Watch Ultra 3. I really love this new kind of strap that came with it, the color and the whole design and battery life. And everything about the Apple Watch Ultra 3 is just a little bit better. The heart rate tracking performance is actually very similar. It might even sometimes be a little bit worse because of the added weight of the Ultra 3. But in this initial test, it actually didn't cause any major issues. But check out my separate review on the Apple Watch Ultra 3. However, if you don't want to spend quite that much money, the Apple Watch Series 11 will serve you very well. You just have to charge it a bit more. And one thing I'm actually curious about in using it over the next few weeks, if it's as scratch resistant resistant as Apple claims. If that's the case, that's actually a significant improvement over previous generations where I did sometimes get some minor scratches on it. Only in the GPS tracking performance did I see a minor difference with the Apple Watch Ultra 3, which seemed to perform a tiny bit better, though more testing is needed to actually confirm that. But both of them were pretty good, honestly. So overall, solid performance. Of course, you need an iPhone to use either of these devices, so that's a limitation. So for Android users, Apple Watches just aren't an option and you're sort of stuck in the Apple ecosystem. So in the end, it's really up to you to decide how much money you want to spend and if an Apple Watch Ultra 3 is worth it or if you're going to go for the Series 11 or for the SE that I still need to test. Generally, even a cheaper device like the SE will perform very well. And I was actually recently testing the Apple Watch Series 6 again. I still need to do the analysis, but even that seemed to perform really well still. So Apple has just been the leader in heart rate tracking for many years. And it's hard to improve on something that's already doing really well. Though as I said in my Ultra 3 video, it does seem like for weightlifting there have been minor improvements over time and they keep probably improving the firmware so they're getting better performance out of that same sensor. And in general, whatever heart rate I get at least on me with the Apple Watch is reliable for weightlifting that I just sometimes drop out. So moments where it doesn't detect my heart rate. Now, if you do decide to get the Apple Watch Series 11, the Apple Watch Ultra 3, 
a whoop strap, well actually not wearing it, but if you do decide to get a whoop strap, an eight sleep pod, not a device, or anything at all on Amazon for that matter, even something as small as toilet paper, you want to save some money at the same time support the channel. There's different affiliate links in the description below, some of which give you the best discount possible. Now, given that you watched this whole video on the Apple Watch Series 11, I think you will like this video on the Apple Watch Ultra 3 or this video on the 8 Sleep Pod.